Hello everyone, welcome to today's movie. In today's movie we're going to take some time series which not only has a level but a trend but also has a seasonal component to it as well. To model both level, trend and seasonal component we're going to use the old Winters method and we're going to use the multiplication model. In this movie we'll use Excel, in another movie we'll use SPSS to solve exactly the same problem. So we'll look at the Excel. We've got the Excel solution already ready. And this problem is concerned with the average quarterly CO2 emissions in parts per million measured at the Mauna Observatory in Hawaii from 2015 quarter one to 2020 quarter two. So the objective is to m model that uh, relationship between the um, uh, emissions and the time point and then use the model to give us forecasts for 2020 quarter 3, 2020 quarter 4, 2021 quarter 1 and 2021 quarter 2. So this is the data that we've been provided. So you can see that in 2015 quarter 1 the emissions were 400.6 parts per million in 2015 quarter 2 the emissions were 403.3 parts per million and in 2020 quarter 2 it was 416.6 parts per million so what we want to do is we want to model that now if we look at this if we were to plot a graph so if I highlight, highlight all that data there and if I go to insert and let's just plot a line graph so you can see the variation okay so you can see the variation there. So not only does it have a level, but it has a trend, and it also has a seasonal component, which seems to be changing over each quarterly cycle, etc. So what I'll just do is, so therefore we know we've got a model of level, we've got a model of trend, because it looks like it's increasing, and you've got this seasonal up and down pattern. So we've got a model seasonality as well. I'll take the uh, graph off just for now. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use Alt Winters multiplication model, and they're the equations to do that. So L is the level, B is trend, S is seasonality. There's the equation to calculate, to fit the model to the actual data, to provide a forecast, a prediction value, but also to use to provide a forecast into the future, because that's what we want to do. So there's the model fit there. And what we want to do is be able to predict to fit into the future. Okay. Now, because if you look at these equations, you see it depends upon three smoothing values, alpha, beta, and gamma. Then alpha, beta, and gamma have to lie within particular numerical range. So alpha needs to lie between 0 and 1. Beta needs to lie between 0 and 1. And gamma needs to lie between naught and 1 minus alpha. Now, just like all of these exponential smoothing models, we need to have initial starting values. Now, please note that in different books, but also in different software packages like SPSS, Minitab, etc., SAS, and so on, they, probably, they may use slightly different methods to initialize the starting values. I've kept it simple, and I'm just using these, these methods here. So what we want to do is, if you look here, there's our initial starting values there. Okay. So what we want is, we want to know what L1 is. Now, to start L1, you need to know L1 minus 1, which is L0. So you need an initial value for L. And what we do is, we put it there. And the initial value for L is the average value between the these four values here. Okay, and that gives me the initial value for L. And then the initial value for B, the trend, we take a zero. And then we need to know what the initial seasonal component values are. Now remember, you've got four because you've got four quarters. So the first one, if you look here, is just the Y value for the, the first quarter, which is 400.6, divided by the average between those four numbers there. And then for the next one, it's the next series value at uh, time point 2, which is 403.3 .3 divided by the average value between those four numbers. 
and then you do the same for that so that one would be d10 divided by the average value and then that one would be d11 divided by the average value remember that's d9 that's d11 that gives you the initial seasonal component values okay so once we've done that we're now able to use these equations here those three and that one to fit the model okay so if you look here L1 which is in cell E8 so L1 must be alpha and then it must be the data value at that time point divided by the seasonal value for that quarter which is that value there plus 1 minus alpha and then it's it's the level at the previous time point which is that plus the value of the trend at the previous time point, which is that. So that's why you need these initial starting values, etc. Now, no, and then we can do the trend value at that time point using this equation here to give us that number. And then we can use the seasonal component equation there to give us that seasonal component there. Now, notice then we can then give a forecast value because the forecast value, if you look here for... Uh, T plus 1 would be equal to L1 plus B1 times 1 multiplied by the seasonal component for that quarter. So if you look here, you can see that the forecast value there. Now, don't forget we're in H8. We're on row 8. So it's a L before that time point, which is 400.83, plus the B value, which is 0 0.00. Then it's times by 1, remember. And then all multiplied by G4. And G4 would be that seasonal component there. Okay. Then once you've done that, if you then look, you can see all the other equations are the same. But what we have done is we fixed alpha using dollar. We fixed beta using dollar. We fixed gamma using dollar as well. So that enables us to copy these equations down to there. Okay. So the model... At time point one, the actual data value is 400.6, but the model would predict 400.6. At time point two, which is 2015 quarter two, the data value is 403.3, and the model would be 403.347, etc. Okay. Now, what we might want to do then is we might want to forecast for these time points here. So that's time point. 2020 quarter three, 2020 quarter four, 2021 quarter one, 2021 quarter two. So at these U time points, one, two, three, four, which represent the value of M in these this equation here. So what we can do then is we can tr copy down the seasonal component bit. Oops, sorry, one second. One, one moment. So we can calculate the seasonal component bit. Now, no, and so can you see, all we've done is copy down the seasonal component bit. Okay. Okay, and then once we've done that, we can then use this equation to calculate the forecast. So the forecast at that time point there, if you look at it, look, FT plus 1 would be the level value at the previous time point plus the trend at the previous time point times one and then multiplied by a quarter one seasonal component which is remember that value there okay so you can see then that you've got e29 which is that value there plus f29 which is that value there multiplied by g26 which is that value there okay because remember that's a quarter three so that's a quarter three so that there must be a quarter three seasonal component. Okay. And then repeat it for the rest. Note, please, that I've put in C31 there, which is M is two. I didn't put it in for M is one. And then if you do the next one, you'll see it's uh, C32, which is that value there for M and so on. Okay. So the seasonal component there must be a quarter three. So you can see why we've chosen G26, because that's the seasonal component for quarter three. And then we got G27 as the seasonal component for the quarter four and quarter one and quarter two, etc. So you can see now what the model fit would give us in terms of fit into the actual data that is already there, but also providing the forecasts for these time points here. Okay, now 
At this stage, what you can do now is you could just create your graph and also fit your uh, forecast fit values onto the same graph. So I, I like the data. I've highlighted all of them, including these time points down here. Insert, and then I want a line graph. Okay, so I just make that a bit bigger. Okay, and then I can do the same there. So I copy that data and right click on there and then I paste. So there is the fit at this moment in time. But please note that it's using alpha 0 0.5, beta 0 0.5 and gamma 0 0.5. What you can do is you can optimize the solution using the Excel solver equation. So you can see here that what we want to do is we want to we want MSC, which is J6 there, J6. We want to minimize it and we want to change it subject to J3 and J5, subject to changing those. Where J3, J4 and J5 are subject to these equations here. Sorry, sorry, those equations there. Okay. Once you put the numbers in and solve, then it will change your solution so your solution looks like that. So therefore, the data series, say 2015, quarter one, the value of the emissions was 400.6. The Alt Winters multiplication model would have predicted 400.6. At 2020, quarter two, the value, the series value is 416.6 and the model would predict 416.43.44, quite close. So, and the actual forecast for 2020 quarter three would be 412.5. For 2020 quarter two it would be 412 point, well that would be 413.0 of course. For um, 2021 quarter uh, one, it would be 416.7. And for 2021, quarter four, it would be 419.2. Okay, and there will be the forecast values. In the next movie, we'll explore how we actually use SPSS to solve exactly the same problem. Bye for now.